Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, I don't know if y'all seen a video where I built my little wood-burning heater stove here. But today's going to be my first time to ever cook anything on it. So we finna get us a little fire started. And I got a couple of these chunks of oak wood. And once we get a good fire and good coals burnt down, we finna take us some squirrel and I'm gonna have it wrapped up and dialed up. And we gonna see that after a while getting it prepared. We gonna set it right in here on this grate. And we gonna cook us some squirrel over wood fire heater here. So stay with me. Let's see how this squirrel turns out the first time cooking on this little guy. Y'all can see I ain't the best fire starter out here. Need me some charcoal lighter. Put some old corn husk in here. I figured them would have lit right up. They ain't wanting to light up. They must be a little damp or something. Man, just my start left waiting on me to start a fire. Freeze to death if it was cold. Ah, it's coming. It's gonna come. Sooner or later. All right, guys, it's gonna get started. Once it gets that burning good, we'll put a couple chunks of this little oak on there. And then we're gonna go get our squirrel prepared. And I ain't gonna put the squirrel on there until them big chunks get burned and make some good coals. And we're gonna test this out. Now, like I said, I attached the video above where I built this. It's built out of two propane tanks. I just had some scrap junk laying around and I guess you can say I just got bored one day and wanted to do something else. But it's catching on up. Alright guys, while our fire's getting burned down making good coals and stuff, we finna start re preparing our squirrel. Now what I'm doing here, and I'm trying to show y'all a way. It's kind of a survival mode, so to speak. But you can do this anytime. It ain't got to be for survival. But I built that little heater. And you see, I can just cook with twigs. Any kind of limbs you pick up. Which I did chunk of oak there. Now that was cut with a chainsaw but you ain't gotta have that you can cut smaller pieces of wood and limbs with a handsaw whatever you need to be but when you go to cooking just meat squirrel deer rabbits fish anything that I call survival food especially in the country where you can go out and kill it or raise your own chickens quail whatever whatever your meat is that you're trying to cook but let's just say you're trying to raise your own food and you ain't got salt and you ain't got pepper. You ain't got your seasonings you bought and all that. Well, I just walked out to my garden and here it is going toward the end of October. And I have Savannah sweet peppers, habanero peppers, jalapeno peppers, mini bell peppers. These are small, but they, they minis. 
I got garlic chives, onion chives, oregano, green onions I just pulled up. All this I just walked out there and got out of the garden. Ain't none of that black pepper, ain't none of that salt, ain't none of that no bog seasoning. But I'm gonna wash this stuff up and I'm gonna cut it up, mix it up, and you're gonna see me prepare this squirrel. And when we cook it over just a wood fire, it makes it makes for some pretty dang good eating. I don't know if you ever tried eating no meat or fish or anything, just washing the meat and cooking it straight over a fire, but I've done it not cause I had to, just cause I like trying stuff like that. We've done it before at the camp, just playing around. It ain't got no taste to it, guys. It's just eating a piece of meat. Yeah, you can live off of it. But why not make things taste good? Maybe your little garden. It don't take much to raise this. You can, you can plant chives, or garlic chives, oregano. Like I said, I got rosemary, thyme, all that. Just in little containers. You can grow green onions just in a container. Outgrow them year round, especially down here in the south. And when it does get to your hard freeze weather, occasionals we get the hard freeze. But Pretty much you can grow something to eat and cook with year round. So I just wanted to show y'all this and I'm gonna get over here to the sink because these green onions, yeah, they just pull straight out of the dirt. They gotta be washed, cleaned up, cut the ends off. I ain't gonna use all this just to cook, cook that little bit of squirrel, but I'm gonna use all of this mixed together. And I just wanted to show y'all what I got straight out of the garden. Now I'm gonna go over there and clean this up and when y'all see me preparing the meat, you'll know what all I've got here. All right, guys, y'all see I got everything cleaned up. Now see them old dirty green onions after you clean them up? Look just like they do out of the store, don't they? I did forget to tell y'all one thing. We're gonna be using tomatoes fresh out the garden. In case you ain't one of my regular followers, there's just a shot from right here way out there at my garden. You can see I do a lot of raised beds, containers, a little bit of everything. You ain't one of my normal followers, you ought to go check out my poor boy's little homestead channel and see what it's all about. So what we gonna do? We are gonna take our little pan, or you've got ten full, but in a situation where you ain't got ten full, a man ought to have plenty of cast iron. My cast iron. Cast iron, you can cook over open fires, put it in a pit, set it in coals, do whatever you want to with it. You can cook and survive with it. All that pretty stuff you buy with that coated and all that mess on it with the handles and stuff, you can't you can't cook with it like that, guys. You can't put it in heaters and fires. That's why cast iron is the number one thing a person ought to have. You ain't got cast iron, just tin pans. This one here fits just right in that little heater we finna cook in. But what I'm gonna start out with, I'm gonna cut one of these tomatoes. And the tomatoes got acid in it, and that helps break down the meat and break down all these seasonings. And when it's steaming and cooking in there, it's gonna give all that flavor in your meat where you ain't just tasting no bland cooked meat. So I'm gonna cut a couple of them up right here. There ain't no special recipe to none of this stuff. Take what you got, go to putting it in there. Like I said, all it is is adding seasonings. When you buy seasonings, most of your seasonings has all different types of peppers ground up in it, onions, garlic, and some of them got different types of herbs. I'm just today just grab some rosemary, uh, oregano there, it don't really matter. We ain't going for a certain recipe and a certain taste. We just want to make a good eating meal out of uh, not just meat food straight over a fire. We'll get the seeds out of these peppers. I'm gonna cut a couple of these up on the bottom. Now, I ain't gonna need all this stuff I got laid out here. I just pick more than I need it, but we're gonna use a lot of it. You 
you can finally chop it up. I'm gonna take the time, take something, put it against something other, and mash it and make it turn into juice. But I'm gonna just add a little water in this, and when you put water in it and it starts cooking down, it'll all turn to juice. Get the flavors out. Put a few of these garlic chives in the bottom. See, and I ain't going to no big extreme here. This ain't no gourmet cooking show. A few of these onion chives. Put up one of these green onions in the bottom. You want to make sure you got plenty of this in the bottom where your water's going to be. And then it'll start steaming and putting off the flavor cooking up into your meat. And then we also going to do this same thing over the top of the meat. Take one of these habaneros here. Now the guys, these ain't hot habaneros here. These are heatless habaneros. I don't like hot food. So if these was hot, even if I used one, it would be very little one. But if you like hot food, it don't matter if you got a hot habanero or what you got. Put it in there. These hens, these here are the same thing. These are called Fuji jalapenos. They just have a jalapeno flavor. They ain't got the heat to them. But if I had, had one with heat in it, I'd still put it in here. Cause just a little bit of heat mixed up and all this stuff. Now oregano's better if it's dried and I got some dried in the house. But it ain't got to be dried to cook with. Just put some of them leaves down in there. You need to get some of that oregano or if you want thyme. Like I said, I got thyme out there. I can put thyme in here. Got some basil out there. I can put some basil in here. My point is, guys, I'm showing you that you can take meat that you can kill in the wild. Take stuff that you can grow in your garden dang near year-round, especially down here in the south, and cook a good meal out of it, and it tastes good. It ain't, it ain't, you ain't got to have it. If you can't go to the store and ain't got salt and pepper and all them favorite seasonings, barbecue sauce, ketchup, you ain't got all that, you can raise and, and still eat good food. I can cook this right here. Go out there and give me a mess of them turnip greens and mustard greens. Put me another pot on another little fire. There's me a meal right there. Meat and greens. Got potatoes. Got potatoes in. Here's two squirrels, guys. I got two squirrels cut up. Quartered up. One of these days, I'm going to show you all how to skin a squirrel. Place them in your little pan right there. I'm going to go and pour some water down in there before I forget. Now we're going to come back over the top and put it up. But what I was. Put some more of these onion chives. But what I was saying, I got potatoes in the house that I'd raised that I'd do. Hey, you could have a fresh baked potato over the fire. This juice that's gonna come off of this would make that baked potato taste good by itself. Don't need no butter. Put up one more of these cabana peppers put on top. I'm getting more out on the paper than I am in the bowl line. Guys, you may be asking how long does this need to cook in my little cooker there? Well, again. This is the first time they're ever cooking that little cooker, but I'm gonna check the temperature on it. And I'm thinking it's gonna be around 300 degrees. And if it's gonna be around 300 degrees, I'm probably gonna cook this here about an hour and a half in there. 
I'm going to cut me another one of these onions up. I really had enough stuff right here to cook twice as much. My pan ain't full, so I'm going to just keep laying it on there. And guys, you could also take your Irish potato. Like I said, I can go in there and put a cut a potato up in here and it'd be cooking all in this same pot. You'd have your meat and potato and all in one little dish right here. And guys, if I'd have put a potato in here and sliced it up, a good sized potato, layered it in here and put this stuff on it and cooked it in there, that's enough. That's way plenty for two people right there. Now I'm going to take this other tomato. Kind of dice it up, squeeze the juice out of it. Ain't nothing fancy. Like I said, I just squeezed that with my hand just to get more of that juice out down in there. The acid and the tomatoes gonna have it, have it cook. We're gonna top that off with water. So that's one thing you don't want it to do. It's dry out. I'm going to take a piece of tin foil. If you ever got to a point where I can't buy tin foil, guys, I would go out here and get me a piece of scrap tin. You know tin nowadays is thin as... I mean, it's, it's about as thin as that tin foil, to tell you the truth, but tin. I could take a regular piece of tin or a piece of house flashing like you use on the roof I could make me a top to this little pot right here, this little pan, and keep that little homemade top with this pan just to have to cook in there, and that would cook hundreds of meals before we burnt this out. But we're finna go check our fire, and once our fire gets down and our coals is just right where it ain't making too much smoke, we're gonna put her in there. Alright guys, we got a good fire now. I'm finna check to see the temperature on this thing. I'm just checking it with a temperature in flyer gun. Up there seeing anywhere from 350 to 390. 308 on that side. 308, 360, 330, 337. So somewhere between 300 and 350 degrees. Now as the fire goes down, you may need to add some more wood. That's something I got to get used to because I ain't, this is the first time I ever cooked on this little thing. But I'm going to have this gun here. As long as the temperature stays up there, and I'm believing there's enough wood in there that's going to do that, we're going to start out and I'm going to cook this for about 45 minutes, then I'll take it out and check it. But we've been to put her in there and let's get to cooking. Pan fits in there just like a glove. One of these days, after I cook a few times on this, guys, I'm gonna make some homemade biscuits and see if I can cook them in there like a regular oven. Now, to do that, you're gonna have to. First time I do it, I'd probably put charcoal in the bottom of it and try it before I start experimenting with doing it with wood. But you got your heat adjusted just right and them coals just right. You want to start when your temperature is just a little higher than you normally cook in the oven. Because as it cools down, you want to, You got to figure out as your fire burns down, you don't want to start putting more wood in there and poking in the fire because then the ashes will go up onto your food. But that's going to be a good little way to cook. And all I got to have is just some little wood that you can find anywhere under these trees out here and stuff i raised in the garden and stuff i killed all right guys so 45 minutes into this i was chilling, watching my temperature and watching my fire i did have to put some more wood on the fire which since i ain't cooking my meat open i got it covered with tinfoil 
I wasn't worried about ashes going up in there. And like I said, this is the first time I've used this to cook on. But I did have to put more wood in there and I put another block of them oak on there. The truth is, this is just like when I've always tried to cook on a charcoal grill. By the time my charcoal got to that perfect mm -hmm. cooking situation, old Eddie was done cooking. Well, that's about what's going on here. I should have built this fire way ahead of time, put another load of wood in it, let it get all them coals like it's got right now, and then started my cooking. Cause what you see burning right here with that slow, pretty little flame, and them all them coals, that's keeping that around 300, well, a while ago it was like 320 to 360, so I'm saying around 340, 350, which to me is just right for cooking slow. But, like I said, I'm learning. This is the first time I've had to use it. This has been about 45, 50 minutes now, but I know cooking squirrel. I've done it long enough. I ain't even gonna take it out and check it. I'm gonna let this continue to cook until I'm about an hour, probably about an hour and 45 minutes if this rain holds off and gives me that long. And then we're gonna take it out, sample it, and see what she tastes like. But after I got my fire, like I said, now I'm liking this now. It just you need to you need to go on and get you a good fire, and then had a fire burning, then loaded it with good wood again, and let your coals get there. But that right there be just right to set around. I hit with your chair, putting off good heat. And ain't got no lot of smoke. Once you got a good fire going, fumes going out the top. What little bit of smoke it is. It just took me a little while to get the fire going. But we'll check back on her in a moment. Alright guys, I had a little interruption there. But back to the squirrel. The squirrel tastes good, but as you can see, it cooked all the juice out of it. And I was so sure of myself that it had enough juice that it wasn't gonna overcook. Cause I usually cook squirrel like this about what? an hour and a half in an oven at 350 degrees full of juice. But I guess me checking that burner with that M flyer there, it may have been hotter on the inside since that fire was coming straight up on it. So that was my first attempt to cook on it guys. I gotta really get over here and scrub on my little pan cause I hope I ain't burnt my pan there. So you can see it burn on the bottom. So you can see here, when I do something and I experiment, it's for real. I'm showing y'all what's happening. Cause we gonna have another video of doing this again. And we're gonna see if we can do it better the second time. But as far as the taste of that meat, Stay away from them burnt pieces. That's really pretty good eating. To just have what I got out of the garden. Would have been real good eating if I wouldn't have cooked the juice out of the pan. But guys, y'all go ahead and laugh at me. But that was my first attempt to cook on that little cooker. And I shouldn't have never put no more wood in it and let it cook. And when the temperature went down on that first load of wood, it probably would have been cooked. All right, guys, I may have messed that squirrel up, but we got some pork chops here. Put a little olive oil on them, sprinkled them with Tony's Creole. If my fire is so good and hot here, I ain't going to let it get me down. I'm going to try something, something else. It's starting to sprinkle rain, but I'm going to spray this grate in here with this canola oil. We're 
We're going to take these pork chops. We're going to see if we can cook these pork chops on these remaining coals while they good and hot. Now I'm going to let these cook in just for a few minutes and I'm going to come flip them over and see if I can keep from burning these up and see if I can make a success out of this cook today. I didn't give y'all enough to laugh about already. Well guys, the rain's here, so I don't know if the second try is gonna be any good. They put my fire out before the meat gets done. Be enough heat to finish getting them done. Rain ain't gonna hold off, my coals is gonna wind out. Guys, I'm determined to get something cooked on here today. You see, I done put me some more kindling on the fire, and I'm gonna at least get these pork chops done. Rain just stopped again. We don't want to mess up and burn them, do we? Do. Starting to look pretty good. We're just gonna leave the door open. I think they almost done. I think we're finna take them off, guys. Cause I don't want to overcook them like I'm doing the squirrel. <laughs> Look good. I think I put just a little bit too much kindling on there to finish them off. The rain done cooled it off too much, so I had to do something to finish it. Alright guys, so I screwed up on cooking the squirrel because I left it on too long and dried it out. If I hadn't left it on too long, my cooker would have worked out alright. So we're going to try the pork chop now. I don't know about y'all, but I think that's done just right. One thing for sure, I could survive eating off of that, but on the pork chops I did just put a little Tony's on it and throw it on the fire just because I trying to redeem myself from screwing up the squirrel and wanted to go on and cook something since this was the first time to cook on that little cooker. So, I kind of cheated on the pork chop because I used Tony's. There's going to be another video of me cooking squirrel just like we did on that cooker. Same way. 
because I gotta figure out how to cook on it because I don't want to have to check it. I want to put something in there with a pan and juice. Know how long to leave it in there. And when I walk around there to get it out, it be done. Just like putting it in the oven for a certain amount of time. So I gotta figure that little cooker out. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it gives some of you some laughs, made your day. Please leave me some comments down there in the bottom. Bash me hard. <laughs> Tell me what an idiot I was. Or is. Or am. Whatever. I don't care. Anyway, guys. Maybe some of you enjoyed the little video. And maybe some of you see what I did and won't wait to make the same mistake. I should have been checking it a lot more instead of thinking it was going to cook the same as it does on any other cooking pit, oven, whatever, Dutch oven. But apparently it got a little hotter than I thought. By me checking it with that thermal gun, it must have been getting hotter than that up under there because the fire is kind of coming straight up under the bottom and it cooked faster than I thought. But I will figure this little joker out playing around out here at the house. But again, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a great day. God bless. See y'all next time.